Okay, ladies and gentle dudes. We're dangerous. Turn off the radio there. I got like five minutes, ten minutes. I'm going to finish where I left off today. The Keene Hamilton Commission has turned out to be nothing more than a colossal exercise in begging the question. Everything that was controversial, everything that was dubious in the eyes of billions around the world has been simply assumed to be true and posited as the starting point for the entire inquiry. As a fallacy, this has been around since the medieval schoolmen who called it petitio principi, petitio, P-E-T-I-T-I-O, that's Latin, principi, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-I-I, double I, principi. I took Latin way back in high school for two or three semesters. The the first teacher I really liked and the second teacher, Minnie Alley, I, I don't know why I, I picked on her so much. I was so mean to her. So I just got tired of fucking Latin because she was just throwing me out of class all the time. In the hands of the Keen Hamilton Commission, begging, because I would copy exactly how she said, because that's how I, I learned. So she would go, Sororis, Sororikibus, Sorororum, Sororus, Sororikibus, Sorororum. And I'd go, Sororis, Sororikibus, Sorororum. And she'd go. And then I realized that's what happened to me. Hey, hey, Harlan. I smell problem trouble oh yeah i smell trouble too okay let's read some more about trouble i only got 10 minutes here so we're reading about the 9-11 we're reading about a uh, 9-11 synthetic terror by uh webster griffin tarpley so i don't know what that latin word means in the hands of the king it probably means like the, if you make up, if you say it's true, therefore it's true, uh, probably because I'm in charge and, and I say what's what there is. In the hands of the Keen Hamilton Commission, begging the question is meant to work as an arrogant bureaucratic act of superior power. Believe this, said the Inquisition, or be damned. Believe this, says the Keen Hamilton Commission. Or be vilified as a paranoid obsessed with conspiracies. Thus, when the 9-11 Commission was created, it turned nine investigative teams. It formed, sorry. It formed nine investigative teams. It took 400 days to start an investigation. Fucking insane. Okay. The first of these was entitled... Al-Qaeda and the organization of the 9-11 attack. That is a clear case of rush to judgment and jumping to conclusions, since such a finding should be the end result of an inquiry and not its starting point. That's like if you if you go into a scientific project and you say, I'm going to prove that the earth is flat, then all your, you're going to be biased on everything you say. You, you, you want to do a scientific inquiry of something you want to say. Is the earth flat or is the earth round? Now let's look at all the different hypotheses. Let's look at all the possible data to prove one point or the other. You can't start with one conclusion already. And this stupid conclusion that 19 hijackers from the Middle East made three buildings fall over with two planes is just the most outlandish theory in the whole conspiracy theory catalog. And it's offered by the government. And it's just... Supposed to be true because they said it's true, even though it makes no sense whatsoever. This is a clear case of rush to judgment and jumping to conclusions since... Oh, yeah, we already did that. For the Keen hamilton Commission is not a contribution to scholarly debate. It is just as much a part of the U.S. government's assault on the world as an F-16 bombing Fallujah. For the Keen hamilton Commission is an act of ideological terrorism worthy of Senator Joe McCarthy. Behind it stands the taboo proclaimed by the figurehead of the regime. This is a quote from 
George W. Bush. Of course, he didn't have this come from his mind. He just read the cue cards. And if he didn't have cue cards, he would say something stupid like, I know you have... I know you have this probably where you live, but fool me once and I get fooled again. I can't get fooled again. Something like that. Okay, but anyway, here's him. I'm going to try to do the best George Bush impersonation. This is from November 10th of 2001. We must speak the truth about terror. Let, let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves. Away from the guilty. Uh, we just assume they're guilty because we said they're guilty? Or did we pay them to be guilty because we hired them and fired them in the sky while we blew them up when we did over Shanksville? When we, when we said the, they took over the plane and, and the let's roll. That was a bullshit. They blew it out of the sky, blew it to smithereens. Anyway. It is a point of view at variant with the best moment in American history, as we intend to show, but no amount of bureaucratic arrogance has been able to paper over the manifold absurdities, the contradictions, the impossibilities, the outrageous flaws that infest the official version of 9-11 events. The Keen Hamilton Commission simply has no answer for questions about how the alleged hijackers were identified, how they were able to operate, why WTC, World Trade Center Building Number 7, collapsed when no plane hit it, why air defense was non-existent, what hit the Pentagon, what happened over Shanksville, what happened to the inside trading, and many more. For any serious, intelligent person, and there are many, the Keen Hamilton Pastche can only be rejected. The Keen Hamilton Pastiche, P A S T I C H E, I learn new words every day. Because he speaks like five languages, so he knows the words that we don't use in English, but they come from French words or Latin words. That in his language, which I think his first language is Italian, pasta is probably used more often. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. The clean ha the let me read that sentence again, so you can see how he used this word because I don't know what it means yet. Why air defense? Well, we already read that one. And there are many until okay, for any serious intelligent person, and there are many. The Keen Hamilton pasta P-A-S-T-I-C-H-E, can only be rejected. The failure of the Keen Hamilton Commission leaves the world with the imbecilic myth the four airlines were hijacked by 19 Arabs from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Kuwait. They, their, squad leader, their squad leaders were Atta, Shehi, Hanjur, and Jarrah. Their mastermind was Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Their rear echelon was Ramzi bin al Shab. Their guru was Osama bin Laden, the terrorist pope who lives in a cave. From his dis distant grotto in the mountains of Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden, the diabolical genius of the 21st century directed the worldwide network that attacked the United States. The next section is called The September Criminals Are Still at Large. At the deeper level or closer to the heart of the matter, Keen Hamilton has failed to indict the real September criminals. It leaves untouched the network of moles in the U.S. government without whose efforts, both in preparation and in cover-up, the events of 9-11 could never have happened. It has not identified the clandestine command center which directed the operation. It has taken not one step toward locating the technocrats of death who actually had 
the physical and technical capability to make these events happen. In contrast to the supermarket caliber terrorists who are supposed to have caused them, all of these networks remain in place and remain anxious to avoid detection. The September criminals with their project, the clash of civilizations in the form of new 30-year war, remain at large, their desperation magnified, but their power undiminished. Think of this when you hear the strident clatter of the Bush regime as it warns the public that a new wave of terror attack is inevitable, quite possibly using weapons of mass destruction of the atomic, biological, and chemical various. Oh, it happened. They did use a biological weapon. One of them was called a vaccine. The other one was called a virus that was accidentally or intentionally released. And the creditors will follow. Okay. The investors will follow when they see at the end of the time profit from this accidental or intentional release. So says... So says Dr. Farrar.